Okay. So for anyone who's here joining us, I'm Christine and Molly's here. Molly, hello. And we just wanted to offer these optional office hours to dig into a few of the resources that the uh, online institute doesn't introduce you to. So, um, so thank you for joining us and. We just wanted to quickly share a little bit more about vital signs and introduce you to this graphic that we think really captures the essence of vital signs. Uh, vital signs is a community of scientists, citizens, teachers, and students all working together to answer a shared research question and explore main ecosystems. So since 2009, uh, the program has been focused on the question of where are the invasive species in Maine and where aren't they? And where are the native species that might be impacted? And if you looked at the field missions page, you can see that we really expanded the field missions and they look more broadly at the questions of how our ecosystems in Maine are changing. So also since 2009, when the program was launched, we've collected lots of data all over the state, and that data has been contributed by students and their teachers and citizen science, uh, citizen scientists. Um, so we're excited for you guys and your students to join us. So again, we just wanted to take a minute to share a few of the resources that aren't in your weekly assignments. And um, we're gonna today share a few that of the resources that teachers really like to use to introduce their students to the question of invasive species and these ecology topics that they explore with vital signs. Um, a lot of them are modeling games and they are all in the curriculum bank. So once we go through them, we will skip to, over to the curriculum bank make sure that everyone knows where that is. Did you put the videos down? They're in a folder in case they don't work. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, so I can access those. So one of the games um, that teachers like to use in their classrooms to start off their vital signs unit is called New Bird in Town. And we have a little video showing, I think the video is of teachers from an institute playing the game. And the game, it's almost like that um, Darwin's beak, beak of the Finch game. So they get to experience having different tools in order to represent being a native and invasive or non-native species competing for resources. Um, so let's see if the video will work and give you a sense of what this game looks like. Hmm, spinning <laughs> wheel. Is it because you're doing it from the shared drive? It might be. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, you have to share it. You still have to select to share it in Zoom. Here we go. There it is. Okay. And volume. the volume of So I think you can already tell from that game that participating in it really gives you a sense and a feeling for what it's like when an invasive species that might be a really good competitor for resources 
comes into an ecosystem. So um, we really like to to debrief that game by talking about how did it feel to be the native? How did it feel to be the invasive? And you could probably tell that the folks with the spoons who were having an easy time getting their M&Ms are really enjoying <laughs> that, while the natives tend to have to spend more energy um, defending their resources and tend to get a little more frustrated. So it tends to be a good one to start off with. Um, to really get the feeling for what's hap what happens sometimes in an ecosystem. Oh, what happened? Well, this is the um, next uh, video. Okay. So um, we have another modeling game called Oh Dear Invasive Species Style, where students, again, are modeling being a native species and accessing resources from the habitat. And then an invasive is introduced to the habitat that they have to compete with um, to get the resources. So we have another video showing what that looks like. Um, here we go. Oh, this, in this instance, they're also using a predator. Um, on the sidelines. <laughs> so there's a few ways. Um, <laughs> to the the so right now we just have natives accessing the resources in the habitat. Well, we have our all time high bluebirds, 14. And the teachers recording the data for drafting later in discussion. So you might notice students, if they don't find the resource they're looking for, they become part of the habitat. And now the invasive comes in. You can see the invasive is serving halfway to the resources, so they are having they have a competitive advantage in that way. You could also have it so the predator isn't a predator of the invasive, giving them another advantage. <laughs> Native bluebirds hanging on. So this is when the teachers bring the students together to look at the data over the generations and see how um, how the population changed over time. So that's another really great modeling game that teachers like to use, depending on the season and if you can go outside. <laughs> how cold is it out? So another set of activities that teachers like to engage their students in before they head into the field are activities where students practice um, their fieldwork skills. So they practice this observation and data collection skills that they'll need to be successful um, before. Oh, oh, I skipped something. <laughs> oh, thanks, Molly. Um, well, I'll, uh, so we have another resource uh, to support learning from those modeling games to help students sort of pause and make sense of those models and make connections to the real world. Um, so this is another great resource for reflecting on those modeling activities. So we can show you where that is in the curriculum bank as well. 
so as I was saying, another set of activities that teachers usually do before heading out for data collection involve um, practicing fieldwork skills. Um, these images don't necessarily capture, but they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the fieldwork skill stations um, usually it's set up as stations around the room, so teams might rotate to practice the different skills um, before heading into the field. Uh, you could set up those skills really based on what species you're looking at, what emphasis you have around their learning. Maybe you want them to focus on collecting good evidence to support a claim. You might set up a station where they focus on that or look at data quality of other students and make comments to really get a sense of what good data looks like. Um, you could do, we have one called Spot the Difference, where students are comparing similar species to try to look really closely for the differences. Um, oh, is this the next slide? <laughs> um, yep. Another station that we like is uh, the Not Found station, where students watch a video from a scientist and learn about why not finding something is still really important data um, and practicing their macro photography so they can take really great photos in the field. Um, you might set up a station where they're looking at the ID cards for the species that they're targeting in the field to really get a sense in advance of what the key characteristics are. So there's all sorts of options for how you could set that up. And again, we'll show you where you can access some of those ideas in the curriculum bank. I think that's where we're going to go now. Just switch the what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just yeah. There we go. Oh, let me do this again. There it goes. Okay. So we're on the Vital Signs website. And you can see Molly's signed in, so now you know her secret username. <laughs> she studied blue herons, great blue herons, so no surprise there. <laughs> um, so to get to the curriculum bank, you're going to want to go to Educator Tools. And if you scroll down to Curriculum and Standards, let's do that first. If you click on Curriculum and Standards, it takes you to the landing page where we pulled up some of the favorite resources. Um, so if we scroll down, we can see a few of the activities we just talked about. You can access right from this page. Um, so New Bird in Town or the M&M game is one of the ones we showed you, as well as the Oh Deer Invasive Species Style. So a few of those you can get right from this page, which is nice and easy. It's kind of bookmarked for you. Scroll down a little bit further, I think um, under science skills are links to some of the activities that we would like to set up as skill stations. So again, nice and bookmarked for you. Um, and then let's down some additional ideas to make it interdisciplinary. But if you want to get to the full curriculum bank, um, you can either click on share curriculum resources or if you go back to the drop down menu, under, under the curriculum and standards, it says use and share activities and resources. And that will take you to the curriculum bank. And this is where you can find everything, <laughs> which can be a little overwhelming. And if you ever can't find what you're looking for, you can always email us. Um, yep, yeah, I got posted yesterday. Um, so if we do a quick search in the search box for skill stations, oh, try without this. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's see. Fieldwork resources. And then here's one that 
I think makes a good skill station preparing for scientific observation. Um, but since skill stations have been around a while, and these are in order of date, you gotta go to the second page. So vital science fieldwork skills stations. Um, and this has the Word document here where you can find the lesson plan. We've also posted links to other activities in the curriculum bank that we think could also be used as stations. Um, so between the comments and the document here, you have access to a number of activities to set up as stations. Um, let's see. What else should we show you? Maybe the field missions page. Ooh, to, field missions. Yeah, yeah, let's look at So if you go to choose your mission, the tab right at the top, you should see field missions and the top three that we kind of change those based on the time of year and what's going on. But you can access um, all the field missions right through that, um, this page here. There's a lot of them. So if there's something you're particularly interested in, um, you can kind of just do a uh, search on the page, but um, each mission has, um, if you click on it, um, we can go to Purple Loose Strife, you can go to mission details, it'll describe the research question um, and kind of explain a little bit about this mission, um, who's interested in the data. And it provides some really clear mission steps, which link you to the ID cards that you'd need, um, the data sheet that you would need to print out for your students. Um, and also at the end, usually it tells you a little bit about why it matters um, and maybe some helpful kind of vocabulary words. Um, and we also, some of the missions have um, a little extra information um, for you and your students, um, including uh, press around this um, topic or species um, or things that other vital science teachers and students have done. Um, and the comment section is also kind of nice to read too because sometimes um, people post some interesting things there. So what else? Um, I think that's all we wanted to cover. 